Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the whole tool and the thread tool to create an appearance as well as modeled threads in Fusion. Now we're gonna get started looking at a metric example, both for external and internal threads. For external threads, we have the option to use the thread tool. And all we really need to do here is select a cylindrical face. When we do this, by default, we'll have a cosmetic appearance of a thread, but it's important to note that the size of our geometry is going to change based on our selection. So if you're creating an external thread, typically this will be the maximum or the major diameter of that thread. We have the option to check modeled, which will create a modeled or a physical thread. Now this is generally avoided in 3D modeling because it does require more processing power for things like selections and graphical previews. But if you need it for a render or for some visualization, this is a great option to create that modeled thread. We can also determine whether or not the threads are gonna be full length. We can pull the slider up and down, or we can use manual inputs in the dialog box or the flyout dimensions. We can change the profile. You can see that we've got a lot of different options, everything from tapered threads to imperial threads and metric threads. But the way that this works is it's generally based on your selection. For example, the cylinder in this design was eight millimeters, so it knew that we were using an eight millimeter thread. If I happen to select a smaller size, it will resize that geometry for me. While it's best that we make sure that our initial designs, our sketches, and our features are using the correct size, it does have some flexibility to allow us to change those on the fly. The designation is gonna determine the pitch of our thread. Now for a metric, this is gonna be one, a 1.25 or a 0.8 typically when you're talking about an eight millimeter thread. What this ends up doing is it looks at the distance between the peaks of each thread. So one is going to be one millimeter between each thread. 1.25 is a little bit more of a coarse thread, meaning that we've got 1.25 millimeters between. And if we go all the way down to the most fine version, we've got half a millimeter between each peak of those threads. So I'm gonna use a standard M8 by one, and I'm gonna go ahead and allow this to be a full length thread. And we're gonna say, okay. Now, one thing I did not mention here is the class. Now, the class or the tolerance of your thread is going to dictate a few things. When we talk about threads, we have to think about how they're gonna be manufactured. Downstream, when we use threads, for example, if we were to create an internal thread with this thread tool, you can see here that the class is defaulting to a 6H. Now, in some cases, depending on the size in your selection and the thread type, you'll notice that you have various options. It's important to make sure that you understand those because it'll change the physical dimensions of your part. For this, I'm gonna do a modeled internal six millimeter thread. And you can see now that we've created the geometry that goes through our part. Now, if I repeat this process and I do it on the larger hole, once again, using modeled, you can see that it automatically selects an M8 profile. Now, if I do this one more time using my right-click marking menu, but this time I don't check the modeled option, you'll notice now that it has an appearance of a thread, but it's still a cylindrical face. Now, we do have another option for internal threads, and for this, I'm going to show my last sketch called Hole Location, and I'm going to use the Hole tool. We can do a single placement at a single point, and we can also use the from sketch option, which allows me to select a sketch point. If we toggle over to our tapped option, this also does include a modeled thread option, which again, will allow us to create the physical threads. Now, unlike the original selections of solid geometry, so for the M6, the M8, and the M10, this is working off of a point selection, which means that we have to manually enter those values. You can see for threaded holes that we don't have a diameter control, we simply need to use the size designation. In this case, I'm gonna use an M12, and I'm gonna do an M12 by 1.5 using a modeled thread option. And I wanna make sure that I'm going all the way through the part. So instead of distance, I'm gonna say through all and select okay. So this allows me to create that physical or modeled thread, but we use the whole tool instead. And one of the benefits of the whole tool is we can easily come through and add a bunch of points in a sketch, or we can manually use this to simply select a point on a face and move it around and determine where we want those threads to be. Now, Fusion 360 is pretty good about the resulting geometry. So you can see here that we are able to create a threaded hole in the side that terminates at the edge of another threaded hole. Now this gets a bit messy if we were to manually model this, but Fusion is able to take care of it just fine. 
Now let's take a look at the same example, but now we're going to be using the inch unit system or imperial units. Once again, we're going to be using the thread tool, and when we make our selections, note that we're now using the ANSI unified screw thread as a default, and it's going to go ahead and default to a size that is represented by our geometry. 3 8 by 16 is a UNC thread or a coarse thread, but we also have a 3 8 by 24, which is a fine thread. Now we're talking about threads metric versus an inch or metric versus imperial. The thread designations are going to be different and the class designations are going to be different as well. When we're talking about thread pitch, we're talking about 24 threads per inch, as opposed to the metric equivalent, which is talking about the distance between those threads. We're talking about the class, I've noticed that Fusion defaults to a 3A, which is an extremely tight tolerance. In most cases, if you're doing a machine tap or if you're manually tapping, you're looking at a 1 or a 2A. Those are going to be a reasonable class, and again, this does affect our geometry, so make sure that you are picking the correct one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the same options under the whole tool, and we're going to be using, again, that location. We're going to be picking our point and determining our size. Notice that this is grabbing metric profiles. Now, if I change this, I can simply go into my standards and pick which standards I want to use. Instead of using an ISO metric profile, I wanna use a standard or a unified screw thread. This is gonna allow me to pick the specific size. In this case, I wanna go up to a half inch, and I'm gonna use a half by 13, a coarse thread, and I'm gonna make sure that, again, this goes all the way through my part and we'll say okay. So the process is exactly the same whether we're working with a metric or a standard unit system, but we just simply have to understand what the different designations are, the thread pitches, and the class or those tolerance values that are gonna affect our final geometry. And once more, it's important to remember that the thread tool can work for both internal and external threads, but the whole tool is a quick way for us to get internally tapped holes but keep in mind that it does not work for external threads. So at this point, make sure that you create a couple designs and play around with both of these tools so you understand how they can work in your designs. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.